up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we're taking a look at an online web tool that has just been announced that would allow you create motion graphics on your web. So whether you're working on a desktop, laptop, mobile device, or even a tablet, you can have access to these and create your motion design and also motion graphics stuff on the go. The cool thing with this is you can also integrate 3D objects into it and you can get started by creating amazing stuff without any sign up, no AI, and also this is totally free. So with that said, let's dive right into it and take a look at some of the cool things that Picky Move now brings to the table as this is a brand new tool that is currently in beta with options of cool updates coming to it in the coming future and for those who might be approaching this program i would like you to approach it with the idea of photo so we already mentioned photopy previously and this is more like an alternative to what you've got with photoshop so right here on the page of picky move to get started is as easy as clicking on the word get started and so this loads up and you'll be presented with a couple of demo files which we'll definitely take a look at for tutorials, there's also about three different tutorials because right now this is still in beta and I believe it's going to get better just like Photopy actually did over time. So first off, let's take a look at the 3D model. So with this, you can import 3D model and you can play back. So playing back is with the space bar and once you press the playback button, there you go. It starts playing back and you get to see the keyframes, the animations, they all come in. And the file format that you can import if you're doing 3D is the GLB file. So if you like to import a GLB file, you can simply go ahead and import it. If we go back and take a look at another demo, we can also see that you can work with movie files and you can also do some masking. So in this case, if we simply open up this and we press the space bar, we can also do that masking thing and you can see all of that masking happening. And it's just beautiful what we have right here. This also supports sounds and of course, it also supports a good number of effects. There's also a composition layer right here, which you can see. And there is also a section that has to do with history. Let's take a look at that panda. The panda looks cool. Let's see what's going on. And we have it. All right. So cool stuff are now here. And for the effects, you also have an effects panel. So to start creating, all you need to do is to get the brand new project and you can select the dimension or the size of the project that you want to create. So in this case, we're going to do a 1920 by 1080. Probably we're going to keep this at 30 frames per second. And for the beta version, this currently supports six minutes. So I'm just simply going to click on OK. And once we open this up, we will be presented with a UI. So this is where your canvas is. This is where you get to find the properties. Your timeline exists here. Your composition section where you get to throw in those layers. This is where they exist. And of course, you've got your composition, your history, and your project like we mentioned earlier. So if we go over to the project section, we can choose the background color right here. So depending on what we want, we can simply, you know, select that background color. And that is technically what it's going to be. So if we want that to be white, we can have that as white. If we want that to be black, we can have this as pitch black. If we would like to start creating a composition, we can click right here and define this composition. And that is basically what you define once you start creating a new project. And if you like to start adding stuff to your composition, it is pretty easy. So you need to click on the add item buttons to decide what you want to import, whether it's image, video, audio, or maybe you like to import rectangles, you can. I would actually suggest that this isn't named rectangles, you know, and this can then star and then, you know, triangles. I would suggest that these should be named shapes and probably another button that shows you all the shapes in there will be great. You can import 3D models and currently this supports GLB files. There's also text and also a group. And to start creating, it's pretty easy. Let's go in and import a video file. And from here, we can click on import a file. Right here, it's asking if we'd like to map the composition to the video file. No, we don't want to do that. So I'm just simply going to click on no. And what we're going to get is the video file will leave inside of the composition, you know, just like you have with every other thing. But of course, if you don't want that, if you want to match the composition to the video file, you can, of course, go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that the composition shrinks and becomes one and the same with the video file that you've just imported. So right here, we do have this. You would notice that the sound is here. We also have the video footage itself. We can go in, have that selected and totally get rid of it. So if we would like to delete that sound, we can. And right now we can also do some stuff. So for your video files, here are some options that are available. You can play with the position, the scale, and you know, you can play with the speed as well. If you want that to be faster, slower, all of that stuff you can. Right here, we can move this within the canvas. We can rotate it within the canvas and we can also scale this. So if this is something that we would like to do, we can of course go ahead and do that. So for example, we would like to scale this up to full screen by animation. What we can do is simple. We can just simply go ahead and make sure that we have it 
right where we want it to be, bang on the center, and we can start adding keyframes. So by default, if you're working with After Effects, you get to find your position, rotation, scale, and also translation right under the layer. Here, for you to get that, you need to come through to the properties and make those happen. So to add keyframe animation to this is very simple. So I'm just gonna wing this over to this point and we're going to add a scale animation. Once we turn on this keyframe or toggle on that clock, you notice we have a keyframe right here. So we can now move this over to a position like so and add another key and then we can scale this. So I'm just going to go in and use this tool and scale it because we don't want to mess around with the properties right there. So we can just scale this all the way to a point like so. And once we move this backwards and forwards, you notice that we have our animation scaling all the way out. For text, you can also do the same thing. So if you want to animate text, probably you like to add you know, a credit here or something, you can. Once you have that text in, you can go in and type in the text you want. So I can just type in the word Blender right there inside of the text and you can play with the fonts that comes with it. Now, there's also something I need to mention about the fonts. Unlike what you have with Photopea, that simply comes with a ton of fonts. So for example, right here with Photopea, Photopea, we have a lot of fonts that we can work with and you can choose to load your own fonts in and you notice that the fonts that we can load in includes OTF and TTF Unlike that, PickyMove allows you to import fonts that are WOFF and also TTF. So OTF files are not accepted, at least right now. So that is something to keep in mind. You also have, you know, all of these properties to animate opacity if you want. You can choose to animate the size. Once you find the clock around it, it means you can animate it. You can also set this to become a mask if you want. So if you like to convert this to a mask, you can turn that on and automatically this becomes a mask. So we can simply just go ahead and scale this all the way out and raise this all the way up. And that way we have just simply converted that to become a mask. So if we send this backwards and you know just press the playback button to get the animation happening, that's it, very easy. You have yourself a mask. Let's go ahead and turn this off and also turn this off. So for effects, if we simply go over here and just gonna go ahead and get a disc, if we like to add effects, we can. So I'm just also gonna increase this so we can have a full view. If we go over to the effects section, here's a couple of effects that comes with it. There's a the grayscale, the color overlay, chroma key, blur, the brightness contrast, level, you know, all the things are right here. So for blur, the blur doesn't really crank all the way up. At this point, you can only crank the blur size to 20. Picolipita, we might want to get this a little bit more. Thank you so much, if that can happen. And we can also go ahead and add some more so we can add maybe another 20 and you know you can just simply double down on these things and i think which i would love to see in subsequent updates is the same way right here within the project we can do a simple duplicate a duplicate would also be nice to have around here so it would be super cool to have that so we can also go ahead and do another 20 and there you go we can turn this off if we want and we can simply delete them if we want to as well and that looks really really cool and you might have also noticed that right over here we have chroma key and yes that is true you can actually key out things if you want so you can have a couple of things and you can key them out and it's quite interesting where this tool is currently going and one final thing i would say is this tool is relatively new and currently it looks like an extremely discounted version of after effect but hopefully over time once this is out of beta we might see tons of features get rolled into it as this was just simply announced on Reddit a few hours ago. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you liked this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.